it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over hypercalcemia. In the previous video I went over hypocalcemia and I'm going to be covering the causes of hypercalcemia, the signs and symptoms, the nursing interventions, and I'm going to give you some mnemonics on how to remember all this stuff and I'm going to hit the highlights on things that you'll probably see on some exams by your professors and on the NCLEX exam. Now, after you watch this lecture, be sure to go to my website, registerednursern.com, and take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on hypo and hypercalcemia. Um, you can access that in the description below, or a card should be popping up, and you can take it from there. Okay, first, let's go over the basics of hypercalcemia. I like to take these big words and dissect them because we need to know exactly what electrolyte we're talking about because we have a lot of hypo and hyper you have hyponatremia hyperkalemia things like that so hyper means excess cal c a l c is the prefix for calcium and emia means blood so we know that we're dealing with electrolyte of calcium and the meaning is there is too much calcium in the blood now, what is a normal calcium level? You definitely want to know this because a lot of times on tests, they're gonna give you a number and you need to know if it's normal or not. And a lot of times they will give you normal and you'll have to say that there's no nursing intervention because this is a normal level. So you wanna make sure that you know that. It's 8.6 to 10 milligrams per deciliter and anything greater than 10 is considered hypercalcemia. Now, let's look at the role of calcium, because in order to understand how it's affecting the body and why you're seeing these certain signs and symptoms, you have to know how calcium normally works. Okay, it plays a huge role in your bone and your teeth health, and it plays a role in muscle and nerve formation, um, I mean function, cell function, and blood clotting. Now, Calcium is absorbed in your GI system. So if you have any GI problems going on, you can affect it, how much you will be able to absorb it. We talked about that in hypocalcemia. It's stored in your bones. So if you have messed up calcium levels, you're definitely gonna be at risk for bone fractures. And it, it is excreted by your kidneys. So your kidneys get rid of it. So if you have some renal failure going on, your kidneys may get rid of it, um, too much of it, or may just keep it. So that can cause an issue. And also, as a side note, you wanna remember that vitamin D plays a huge role with calcium in absorbing it. So um, anytime a patient's usually given like calcium supplements, they may be given vitamin D because it's gonna help absorb it. And then you're gonna see here in a second why if you take too much vitamin D, it can increase your calcium levels. And also, phosphorus and calcium, I like to think of this like in nursing school, this is how I remembered it. Phosphorus and calcium, they are sisters, but they compete in everything and they don't like each other, so they do the opposite. So phosphorus and calcium are just like that. They affect each other in opposite ways. So if phos goes up, calcium goes down. If calcium goes up, phos goes down. So remember that, it's very important and it'll make sense why we're having these certain causes of hypercalcemia. Okay, so what are the causes of it? Try to remember the word high cal. We're talking about high calcium, so we have high cal. Each letter will represent a cause. So H stands for hyperparathyroidism. We talked about this in hypocalcemia, but your parathyroid hormone plays a huge role in regulating your calcium. And this is a huge thing that your exams love to hit on. So remember, if anything has to do with the parathyroid, it has to deal with calcium as well. So if you have high per parathyroidism, means you have a lot, an excess of the parathyroid hormone, this is gonna cause calcium to be released too much in the blood. So it's gonna increase your levels of calcium. I stands for increased intake of calcium. This can happen when someone takes too much of their calcium supplement or too much vitamin D, because remember vitamin D and calcium play a role together. G stands for glucocorticoids, and how they work is that they suppress the absorption of calcium. So you're not absorbing the calcium and too much calcium is being left in the blood. H for hyperthyroidism. 
C for calcium excretion decrease with thi thiazide diuretics. Um, also renal failure and bone cancer because this is not allowing you to, do, to get rid of the calcium through the kidneys. And a big thing you need to remember are the thiazide diuretics. This is another big test question. So like hydrochlorothiazide, anything that ends in the thiazide diuretic can increase your calcium level. So remember that. A for adrenal insufficiency, like in Addison's disease, and L for lithium usage. Um, a lot of mental health patients are prescribed lithium. Um, remember this, this is another huge test question because how it works is it affects your parathyroid, goes back up there, and it can cause your phosphorus to decrease. So what happens whenever phosphorus decreases? Calcium is going to increase. So that is how lithium can affect that. So try to remember that. Now, how do these patients present with hypercalcemia? What are their signs and symptoms? Remember the phrase, the body is too weak. Weak being the key word because high calcium is going to make them feel horrible and terrible. So W, weakness of the muscles. This is going to be very profound. They're just going to be very lethargic, tired, and it's going to be really hard for them to move their muscles because remember, calcium plays a role in muscle function. E, you're going to see some EKG changes, especially if it's significantly high. And normally what you're going to see, the biggest thing is the shortened QT interval. Commit this to memory. This is another important test question. They're going to say, patient has a calcium level of 12. What may you see on an EKG? And the option would be shortened QT interval. Now remember in hypocalcemia, it's the opposite. They actually have a prolonged QT interval. And you can also see with hypercalcemia, a prolonged ST interval. Um, a, for absent reflexes, they're not going to be as hyperactive like how they were in hypocalcemia. They're going to be absent-minded, disoriented. They're also probably going to have abdominal distension from constipation. The bowels are going to move slowly, so they may have issues with that. And then last, the K for kidney stone formation. Another big test question. Um, you'll see that here in a second with our nursing interventions, how we're going to deal with this. But um, they can have the renal calculi formation, so you definitely want to watch out for that. Now let's look at the nursing interventions. Okay, first thing you want to do is keep that patient hydrated. This will help decrease the formation of any kidney stones. Next, you'll want to watch out for safety, such as any type of falls or injuries because these patients are at risk for bone fractures. You'll want to monitor their cardiac, their GI, renal, and neuro status. Um, put them on a heart monitor, watch for any short and QT intervals, anything like that. Um, Watch if the patient starts to complain of any flank or abdominal pain because this may be a sign of that a kidney stone is forming. And if that happens, you'll probably want to strain the urine to see if they've passed anything every time they um, void. Next, you'll want to decrease their consumption of calcium-rich foods. And um, the doctor may stop them from taking if they were on any thiazide diuretics, any calcium supplements, or vitamin D. And if you see that the patient is on that, you may want to call the doctor and ask them what they want to do. And um, the food, you'll want to remember what foods are high in calcium because, again, this is another test question that professors like to hit on. They'll say the calcium levels 12, uh, what foods should the patient avoid? So um, I have thought of this little saying to help you remember because remember we have a calcium problem. So here's a little um saying, young Sally's calcium serum continues to randomly mess up. She can't keep that calcium level normal. So the beginning letter of this phrase will correlate with the food. So Y for yogurt, S for sardines, C for cheese, the other S for spinach, the other C for collard greens, T for tofu, R for rhubarb, and M for milk. Those are your rich foods. Now these interventions is what you would do for mild cases. Now if you had a moderate case, the doctor may um, order some type of calcium reabsorption inhibitor such as cal calcitonin. That is a big one, so remember that drug. That is one of those. Um, it inhibits reabsorption of calcium. 
And um, biophosphonates, remember phos, phosphorus and calcium do the opposite. So they may order that to help decrease the calcium levels. And prostaglandin synthesis inhibitors such as aspirin and NSAIDs can help um, decrease the calcium level as well. Now in severe cases, the patient will be ordered dialysis. So dialysis can pull off that excessive, excessive um, calcium. Now that is about um, hypercalcemia. Now don't forget to go to my website registerednursern.com and take that free quiz to test your knowledge on this and check out my other videos on electrolyte imbalances and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.